So spring is finally here. Started to warm up a bit, fish have started to move. Come to Allcroft today, I'm going to show you how to target their skimmers and more importantly target the better fish. And not only that, I'm going to do it on a budget. I'm going to show you how to do it nice and cheap. Let's go and have a look. So when I said it's super cheap day, it literally is super cheap day. I've got some fishery pellets, mixed a pint of them up, just wetted them down like you would a standard micro pellet. Throughout the year you get loads of little half bags of pellets, quarter bags of pellets, all different fishery pellets, some expanders, some sinkers. I save all these and I blitz them down in my little blitzer at home. It gives me some lovely fluffy powder. I mix this up, it gives you a nice pellety, coarsey, little, little flakes, big flakes. Something that you can feed alongside some micros. So it's it's still feeding them, it's got a lot of feed content, but they're not having to pick the, the individual pellet out. It's just a nice little bit of crumb. So I've got some expanders, I've got some fours and sixes. These are all I'm gonna put on the up today. Maybe a single six mil or two four mil or even a single four mil. But that's all I'm gonna use on the feeder today. I'll show you how I prep my pellets because it's a little bit different to some people for feeder fishing and I'll show you how I hook them. So when I said I'm going to use some 6 and 4 mils today, I've literally got a little bag of expanders here. You don't need a lot. This is how I prep mine for the feeder. I don't pump them because sometimes they can go a little bit too soft for the feeder and not hook as good. So what I do is I just put a tiny amount in the corner of a little sandwich bag. You need to do this night before, 24 hours before. A little bit of oil, whatever your choice is putting no water in this so I've put a nice glug of that in as you can see it's coated them all in the bottom I then just want to tie that off so they're all covered and that then just goes in my bag like that with my pellets in put it in my bag for the day after and then when you get up in the morning your pellets all out like this they've took the soak on but they're not as soft they still retain a little bit of the structure and it allows when you're spiking them hooking them bayoneting them um, they're just a bit more durable doing it this way and because you've used an oil it's soaked it in everyone will sink you don't need to worry about any of them floating So we're here on Bridgepool today. There's plenty of skimmers in this venue. There's also some carp, but it's early on in the year. They're not always in every peg and they're not always feeding. My go-to setup today is going to be five pound main line down to a little bead that's just behind a little knot to stop it. Everyone has their own little way of setting their total free running rig up using a 15 gram smooth hand cage. Just enough to carry enough bait to catch a couple of fish without overfeeding them build my peg up slowly i don't want a massive amount of bait in i don't want them too much bait and they can't find mine and then all it is is goes down to a loop to loop and i've got a 12 inch hook length eight of 0.13 18 hook and obviously the little bayonet spike that i've showed you this is coupled with a really soft 10 foot rod i'm gonna fish today i've put my rod on my sticks on my marker sticks and I've clipped up at 14 meters I've done this on purpose because in a match most people who are fishing pole would fish 13 meters that's the limit I just want to go past that and fish in an area where skimmers are used to sitting without being fished for this way I feel you're catching the fish that always are used to backing off the pole I'm just fishing in the area where they're used to sitting I've also going to Later on in the day, I may underarm it. It's nice and solid on bottom here. It's out at silt. If they're really having it, they'll come to underarm, and it might be like four or five metres out. Um, they don't always have it, but most days they will. We sat on our own, so there's no reason why we shouldn't.
there's nothing complicated about this fishing at all. You don't need to put a massive amount of bait in, the fish are there. They can't go anywhere. It's a commercial fishery, they can't disappear, they've got to be somewhere. So, got to presume the fish are in front of us at the start, so there's no need to put a massive amount of bait in. So I'm going to set off by just using my, my pellet crush. Lightly nipped in the feeder, I just want a column to come down and hopefully the fish follow it down. And I'll work, I'll work it out through the day and then I'll work out whether they want some pellets introducing more pellets, less crush, more crush, less pellets. Just work out your bite. Sometimes they only want a tiny little bit of feed and you might end up freezing these pellets back down because you don't use them. Same as the crush, you might use a little bit of it, you might not need it, but we've only mixed a tiny little bit up. But it's plenty enough for today. So, total simple. I'm just going to cast it onto my 40 metre line. I've got a little bit of green reeds at the side of the platform. What is my marker? I'm going to use that as my marker. Sink my line. And one thing I'm going to do today, I don't want to fish with a tight line, a tight tip. I'm going to fish virtually slack. The bites aren't going to be hard to see, but there's going to be a lot of fish in me swimming. It's going to create commotion. The last thing I want to be seeing is all liners and have a tight line and not know what to pick up on. So just by, I've just tightened my line up now so it's sunk. And then I'm just going to release it a tiny little bit and I'm fully slack now. My tip is, well, it is straight. And you, you see some liners still. You see a lot of liners, but more than likely, the next time it goes round, there's going to be a fish on. And I won't be jumping at the rod all the time when a liner or anything happens that isn't a bite. So I've chose to use a cage over a solid feeder today because the water gets in the cage a lot quicker. As it's going down, there's particles dropping off your cage and it creates a column of bait. And fish that might be mid-depth, mid-water, this bait, will, they'll come into this bait and they'll follow it down. Because you're using the crush, it sinks. It sinks like little mini pellets and the fish naturally follow it down. They follow the column down and you want, I want to obviously concentrate them on the bottom today with my feeder fishing. And it's just a little way I can do that. If I use a solid feeder, it would go straight in, nothing would come off it. And potentially the fish would have to then come and look for it rather than have a visual, have a smell and a scent trail and go down. It's venues like this where, especially in matches, although you don't know it, skimmers make up a massive amount of your weight. And there's parts at day where carp, they feed at start a match and they feed at end at match. For a lot of people, there's three and a half hours to do something in between. This is a way of putting quite a lot of weight in your net. And you can still target your carp at start and end. But mid-match, there's a lot of venues where it's just not devoid of fish. They're there. They just, they've got used to people fishing and they know when you're fishing. That's the time to target the skimmers. Keep putting your weight in your net. Keep ticking over. Hopefully have a good last hour. You've caught a few at start. But this little method, it's absolutely deadly for commercial skimmers. If I'd have come today and fished maggots, yes, 100% I would have had 20 times more bites, but there's no end of two, four, six ounce fish in here. I don't want to target them. I want to target the two, the three pounders, pound and a half fish, the fish that are real big weight builders. And it's, it's easier to build a weight up a bigger fish it's, it's not, it's hard to say, I'd, you're getting less bites, but you're going to catch more weight by selectively targeting the bigger fish. We've, we've left that in like two or three minutes now, and we've had a few signs on the tip, but we haven't had a bite. So now in my head, I'm thinking maybe I've been cleared out or maybe the trail uh, um, pellet crush hasn't done its job. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few more seconds and then I'm going to have a another cast and repeat the process and put another column in the water and hopefully just get the fish concentrating in the same area. There's definitely been something in the peg because I got some signs. See I've pulled my pellet off when I've struck then so all I'm going to do is rebait up. This 
time I'm going to go for a big fat 6mm one. Same again. Just keep repeating the process nice and smooth. Same marker on the far side. All the time you're regular casting, you're just you're building your peg up slowly. You're not doing anything daft. You're just adding a little bit of bait each time. You just get used to that bait going in. And eventually they'll find it. And get their heads down. What you'll find with these skimmers, or the bigger fish in these sort of places, a bit like buses, you'll, um, you'll fish for a little bit and you'll think, oh, it's not happening, it's not happening. And then you'll literally catch three or four in real quick succession and then you'll realise what sort of weight you're putting in your net. When they're two, two and a half pound a piece, you catch four in 10 minutes, it's 10 pound. This commercial especially, like a lot around the country, suffers with an horrendous amount of silt. And sometimes when you're fishing out there, you're fishing, it could be two or three foot of silt, you don't know, it's built up over years. And sometimes fish don't like feeding in that. They cut just, they sit mid water, they come down, they have a feed and they come up. I've had a plumb around today and out to about five, six, seven metres I've got a solid gravel bottom and that's just going down the slope and then when I go into the bottom of the slope that's where the silt starts. So today it could be a five metre day, they could want to fish on the hard gravel, the hard bottom. Um, they're definitely out there um, but you have a chance of weight being silty, they mess your bottom up, there's big clouds of silt and sometimes you can't find your bait. So by giving yourself two options, you've, you've always got a backup plan. So you fish this for so long, you will catch fish. But when you come a bit shorter, you might realise, they might not be there, but you might realise how easier they are to catch because there's no silt, there's no mess to make, they either eat your bait or they don't. So when I've said this pellet crush, what, what I'm calling my pellet crush, it literally is crushed pellets. I save all my little bits of expanders, my half bags of pellets, quarter bags of pellets, little, you might have a few different fishery pellets. Put these into a blender at home, just a standard food blender, obviously not one that I use still for food, or my wife a good mad. Just what I've got in my fishing room, I put all my, all my pellets into it. Anything I've got left, I blitz them down, so there's nothing left and then I just use it, it's just a way of not having to waste any bait at all and you're virtually feeding what you're fishing with on the hook, it's, it's makes sense really but because they're not whole pellets anymore, you're not physically feeding a pellet that stands out as a pellet, that's why you can introduce your pellets to it and vary it up. So you've got a scent, a scent of a pellet without the structure of a pellet. Sometimes they just want the pellets, but until you get going and get a few fish in your peg, you, you won't know. You've got to work your way into it. So when we said we we're going to use expanders on the hook, next thing we've got to do is figure out how we're going to hook them. We could just clean hook them with a hook in like you would on a pole, but for me, it doesn't give you good enough presentation on the bottom. When a fish sucks it in, you want the hook to go in its mouth rather because you're not going to strike the hook out of the pellet. You want the fish to hook itself. 
So my go-to method is a tiny little bayonet spike. And it's as simple as just load your spike up. I take a few pellets out at a time out of my bag. I don't want them drying out. So I'm just going to pick a nice plump juicy one. I'm just going gently straight through with my spike, nipping my spike and pulling it down. Gives me a perfect presented bait every time. If I want to put two on, I can. There's enough room on air. There's just one four mil there. If I want to put a six mil on, it's just exactly the same method, but you just got more bait, less bait. It's just got to work out on the day what they want. Single, double, bigger, smaller, bigger air rig, smaller air rig. Just work it out, but I normally have about 12, 14 mil air to my spike, and I find that's perfect. Size 18 hook, I've got 0.13 diameter line on. It's fine enough to catch skimmers, but it's also way strong enough if it's balanced on your rod, soft rod, your clutch is set right, you're going to get any carp in that you hook as well. Dead slow pull around that. There were no mistaking that wasn't a bite. No point rushing them, just nice and steady. So much fishing these commercials are absolutely beautiful. That's the sort of fish we're after. These fish are, you're not going to catch them on maggots. They eat pellets, they feed on pellets, they're used to eating the bait that they're chucking for the carp. That's why by targeting these, you can really build a weight up. Select the proper fish, fish for the proper fish. And just keep, just keep it nice and simple, just keep doing it the same. Caught that one on a single four miller. So I'm going to try that again. Single four mil. Twenty or thirty pellets into me crush. I'm just plugging it a little bit harder now. Just to see if they want to come into it on bottom. Pop it on my target. Sink your line. Set the trap ready. Got, yep, got a little audience. If they're not showing spring is finally here, I don't know what is. So it's getting later on in the session now. I've caught plenty of fish on this longer line. Five minutes ago, I've just fed some pellets and some crush onto my short line. Uh, when I say short, it's about five metres. I'll show you in a minute when I start fishing it, the, how I chose the distance and how I keep accurate without having to clip up. It's getting that time of day where I just feel the fish are starting to move. The, you can tell the swim isn't as positive, isn't as good as it used to be, as it was at the start of the day. And I feel that that might be because fish are starting to explore other bits at lake now and they're getting a bit more confident later and then they're going looking for food. So by setting a trap short, we can target them fish that are on the move. They're under my foot plate now. <laughs> I am the duck whisperer. It's not only skimmers that like pellet crush. <laughs> yeah. Coming from both angles. Pincer movement. So 
some fishermen always get the birds. That soon spoke them. Only picked up. Not for long. Really important to you with a really soft rod. Let the rod do all the work. Not fishing mega light, uh, mega heavy line, we're fishing dead light, so by having a super soft rod, cushions all the lunges of the fish. When you're catching big, big skimmers and bream, you don't need many every hour to build a good weight up. Some of them are carp size as they are. This is the difference fishing expanders makes. There's no mistaking, that's a proper bream for this venue. It's gonna be well over two pound, two and a half pound. It's the fish we're targeting. I'm gonna carry on fishing out there for a little bit because I've got them lined up now, but come back and I'll show you how I'm gonna fish this five meter line and how I approach that. So we're now getting a little bit later in session and I've talked about this, what I'm gonna call my five metre line. Fish are starting to move now, it's later on in the day, so they start to move onto the shelf, the bottom of the shelf, and I'm gonna start fishing where I think the fish are gonna go. So I've fed a few feeders full um, at my five metre line. Because I'm fishing five metres, I don't wanna fish a clip here. Because the bites will be that vicious and I'm that direct to it. If I just use a clip, I won't have chance to get the clip off. So. I will combat this and keep accurate is same set, same setup I'm using out there load it up the same but what I do is each time I drop my feeder so it touches the butt of my rod and by this I can keep this accurate and all I do is pick pick a marker again swing it out and when it touches the surface just let go of it let it go to the bottom and then sink the line and just slowly tighten up onto it and then fish it slack again. This way, I've got no clip on, but I've gone in the same spot each time. Just loosen my drag a little bit for this because some of the bites can be really savage. The big liner then straight away. When you fish this line, the fish tell you if they're there straight away or not. That virtual must have gone over one's back because I had a big pull. It weren't a proper bite, it just let it pling off and carry on. But it just shows me there's something there straight away. Another big liner then. This is where you'll catch your bigger fish as well. I'm just on the traverse from where the hard bottom is on the slope to where the messy sludge starts. I'm just fishing out of the sludge, just on the nice hard bit. The tip is not staying still now. Even though I'm fishing slack, it's coming back slack. But I'm, I've only got them a couple of metres of line out, so... Anything that's near my feeder is giving me a little sign now. Just got to be patient and pick up when there's one on rather than striking at liners.
a real positive pull then. There were no mistake in that. And there we have proper skimmer. Just goes to show them fish are starting to move and looking for the feed now. Still taking it nice and steady. But they're the sort of fish that we're fishing for on this line. Big old warriors. There's no mistaking that from a skimmer to a bream. It's definitely a breed. Straight in bottom lip. That's how I want them to be hooked. Can go on now and catch a big bag full. Right, I'll bait up and I'll show you the technique one more time. One of my single six mil juicy pellets. Loaded with my pellet crush. I'm going to release my feeder to my butt again, my bail arms open, swing it out to my marker as it touches the surface, let go, it's now on the bottom, slowly, slowly tighten up, and then just drop it so we've got a slack line again, now we set fishing, check my drag, Obviously when we said we are only going to use a little bit of bait, you can see how much bait I've got left. I've still loads. But just goes to show you don't need a massive amount of bait to catch a big bag of fish. Gone are the days where you need gallons and gallons of bait. These fish see it all the time, they get, sometimes get a bit spooky on big piles of bait. Little and often, work your way into your session, it's often the best way. And what we don't use, we can just take home. I can dry these back out and put them back in my blender and then that becomes my crush for next time. I'm not being tight but every penny counts. When you're fishing short like this, you need to make these fish count so it's pointless picking up when it's not a bite. Wait while there's no mistaking, wait while you get towed in like that. Whoa! See, because I ain't got a stop on, it's allowed that fish to run. It's took some line, it's only a, a bream, but if I'd have had a stop on then, there's a good chance that would have broke me. But by using this little method from the button, swinging it in, allows you to hook and landings each time. He's a proper fish now. So on that note, I'm gonna end this session. What an absolute beautiful fish. Just goes to show, on less than a five is worth a bait, two line approach of now utilising the five metre line to good effect. You can come, you can have an absolutely cracking day fishing and it's not going to break the bank.